Welcome back here on FloridaHSFootball.com as we talk with the state championship coaches that are going to be coaching the state championship games over the next two weeks between Tallahassee and Fort Lauderdale. I'm Josh Wilson here at FloridaHSFootball.com joining you here. And joining me now is the head coach of the Trinity Catholic Celtics, head coach John Brantley III in his third year in his second stint, nine years overall at the school taking the team back to a place that the last time they were there, he was the head coach in 2010 when they won the Class 2B title that year. Trinity Catholic is back in it playing for the Class 1S state championship. And, Coach, I appreciate you being able to take a few minutes of your uh, it's a busy schedule here uh, you know, to be able to join us, uh, getting ready to coach the, the Trinity Catholic to another state championship game. So uh, what what is the mood like right there in Ocala for you, especially around the Trinity Catholic community? I know this is huge for y'all to be able to come back and be able to, uh, you know, be able to get in and uh, be able to play for a state championship once again. Well, Josh, it's it's big and everybody's excited in the community and everything. It's it's a there's a big buzz around Ocala right now, and you know we've been out of as you just mentioned, been out of the um, state picture there for a little while, but back in it, and I'm glad to be back at Trinity Catholic with my second session I've had there, and um, we're looking forward to the challenge. Um, so our kids are ready to hit the practice field again today. We just watched film yesterday and. Um, Going to work today. I mean, you know, look, looking at everything, you know, with, with, with this team, you know, I mean, uh, you know, when, when the, the FHA, uh, you know, redid the classifications, you know, split the state up in Metro and Suburban, uh, put y'all in the 1S classification, uh, not, not a very small classification, but uh, it, it puts it in more of like-minded schools that what Trinity Catholic is, you know, instead of the, you know, the schools from the larger Metro area. So for you, you know, being in, in plus also returning district play back to the team. So, I mean, for you, I mean, what was it like, you know, being able to have, you know, le- you know, have something that compete for in the in the in the regular season but now being able to compete for here you know with the state title game here coming up here on saturday afternoon at one o'clock at gene cox stadium in tallahassee well i think uh i think they've kind of accomplished what they wanted to and and given more schools opportunities to win state championships so uh you know I, i i don't worry about things like that i'm gonna play with the rules and everything they give us to do that and 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 put the best product out on the field and everything, but I can't worry about your suburban situation. But in our situation, I thought, it, you know, it opened things up for us. I mean, when you butt heads every year with Trinity Christian and Hollywood Chaminade and, and teams like that, that's a major, that's a, that's a major uh, uh, task in itself right there because they're pulling from so many more people than we are. But, hey, I understand it. I get it. We're going to play with the rules and um, the classes they get. And where they place to belly for us, I think it's worked out well for us at Trinity Catholic, and we're excited about the challenge this week up in Tallahassee. No, absolutely, and of course, uh, speaking of that, looking at everything you know you've done this year, you know, and having to go out, you know, you had a three-team district, so you had to go, you know, you had two two guaranteed games, had to go find eight other games to get on that schedule, but uh, you know, on the, on the initial schedule, but a uh, hurricane kind of affected a, a few things of game. I know y'all had a tri- trip to Key West that was going to be at the end of the season that got kind of wiped off because of what Hurricane Ian did with the with the scheduling down there. But uh, for your guys, you know, only eleven games played so far this season that you have played in, so you know. I mean, you know, for, for, for you guys, you know, I mean, you know, in this, what, what have you told your guys, so, you know, during the season, you know, when, when, you know, a game gets wiped off the schedule and you, you have no makeup because there's no way to get that makeup put in? Well, you know, I think we've been in that mode here for about the last three years with COVID and so much different things going on with hurricanes and um, they've kind of gotten used to it. You know, you just got to keep your head on a swivel and keep moving forward and fighting through it. And we've done that all year. I think the thing that we did uh, that I always catch a little bit of flack about is is playing a tougher schedule, but I thought we would be rewarded for that based on the, what we were told when we went into the situation with the new rankings and stuff like that. I don't know how true that is because we're going to watch two teams that we played this year that are going to be playing up in Tallahassee um, before our game. So, you know, I'm going to go play good competition. That's what we need to do. Uh, it's, it's been a proven, um, fact that we, if you better yourself by playing better competition, you're going to be rewarded in the end if you stay healthy. And that's a key to it. But we played Florida high. They're playing for a state championship, CCC, 
they're playing for a state championship, played a great range team out of, um, out of Jacksonville and Calvary Christian out of Clearwater. So, um, you know, there's not too much that we're, we're not going to see uh, in the playoffs that we haven't seen already. So we've been hitting the mouth. So, um, and I'm sure we're going to get hit in the mouth on Saturday at one o'clock. You know, let, let's talk about that first. I mean, the, the playoffs, your first two games in the in, in, in the in the regional semifinals and the regional finals, uh, pretty much almost a piece of cake, you could say, in a way, for y'all. But, you know, John Carroll gave you the, probably the biggest test last week. You know, in the state, state semifinal, right, rightfully so, you know, you're gonna, those are usually, usually your state semifinal will be your biggest test. So, you know, Coach, in, in, in talking about that, you know, what what is it, you know, with, with that game against John Carroll, what did y'all learn from that game and, and you know, being able to, you know, a, a competitive game against the Golden Rams, you know, who, who are a very good, solid team from Fort Pierce? Well, they were they were very physical. Coach Grody and them have put together – They've got, a, they've got a tremendous program down there in Fort Pierce. And they came up here, and I can tell you, they hung their hat on the, the rally cry. Of, uh, they came up here two years ago undefeated, and we beat them pretty good up here in Ocala. And I know they used that as a rally cry when they were up here the other night, and they played well. That game was not in hand to the last couple of minutes of the ball game, but John Carroll played well, and we needed that. That was a physical game, two good football teams, and uh, – I think it's going to help us, and we stayed healthy out of it. Um, and so moving forward, that was a good test for us before this play this good First Baptist team on Saturday. I mean, let's talk about this uh, the state championship game at first. Uh, I mean, you know, First Baptist, they're playing for the first time ever in a state championship game here. So, uh, you know, what what is it about that, you know, going against a team that is, you know, ta- you know, com- coming into the state championship game the first time, whereas this is not your first rodeo, obviously, in a state championship game. Well, you know, hopefully that'd be an advantage for us. This would be the fifth time that Trinity's been in the state championship game. And um, and as you mentioned, First Baptist hadn't been the one, but, well, they, they got some talent watching them on, looking at them on film and everything. And um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good battle. They run the ball and do a lot of the things that we do that we try to accomplish to control the football game. And they do it as well. And, Got a perimeter player out there, receivers, uh, Clemson commit, who's a tremendous athlete, and um, so it's it's going. It should be a great football game. We're looking forward to it. A lot of resemblance when you look at both sides of the ball, um, but we're going we're going to do what we do. Um, you know, we're going to lean on that big front offensive line. You know, we average six four, six five, three oh five across the front line, and got Bo Beard, who's ran for over sixteen hundred yards this year. Um, and we're going, we're, we're not going to change anything, but our, our young quarterback, we got a 10th grade quarterback, Preston Wright, who's really come on over the course of the season and that running games allowed that to happen. And he's, he's become efficient in the passing game and you can't be one dimensional and win a state championship. I can promise you that because there's teams out there that can shut you down. So, uh, Preston has done a, jo- a nice job getting our passing game to where it needs to be. So I think that's going to complement our running game and, and give us the opportunity in our defense. Um, you know, it's played well since Calvary Christian game. We got in a big shootout with those guys. They've settled down and um, come up with some new um, strategy and game plans and done uh, played within their system with Coach Young and what we've been able to do on the defense side of the ball. So we're ready. We're healthy. We're ready. And Look forward to heading up there Saturday morning to play a good FBA team. You know, that's another thing, you know, you, you, you kind of got into it right there. What I was going to ask you about was uh, with the uh, state, with, with your offense and defense. So, I mean, you know, when, when looking at the teams that you, you know, especially a 2010 team compared to this team, you know, 12 years later, I mean, what, what are the, what, what are similarities to this team that you coached and what, what are, you know, the, that, that team in 2010 compared to this 2022 team? And maybe what's our, what are some differences in that? those two teams? Well, there, there's a lot of differences. I can tell you that. Uh, the kids are different now. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. It's a, it's a challenge to coach uh, this new generation and everything. You know, we don't think it's 12 years a long time ago, but there's a big difference. But, you know, football's football. I mean, you know, we're not going to change that, and that's what we talk about, and that's what we talked about in meetings um, uh, this week and, and getting ready for the game. There's, you know, let's don't reinvent the wheel here. Let's do what we do, identify what we do well, uh, keep doing it and scout this other team. But 2010 team was a good team. It, um, 
you know, it, it got up a couple of touchdowns in that last game. We played a triple overtime against University out of Nova and won 56-55. It was probably one of the most memorable games I've been involved with with triple overtime. I've, it's the only game I've ever been involved with. Overtime. So that, I remember that game very clearly, triple overtime. That was a, that was a wild finish there there at the, at the Citrus Bowl there in Orlando in 2010, triple overtime against University School, you know. And, uh, 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 Coach, yeah, I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> so, you know, I, regardless, but um, – but that was that was kind of neat. But um, this team's totally different. You know, we got, you know, we got a young quarterback. Um, um, you know, it's just it's totally different. We got an offensive line that's huge. That we won a state championship, and you know, that 2010 with a 170 pound left guard, and um, you know, he probably couldn't even get on the field right now. So there's a big difference and the different challenges that we're dealing with now that we had in 2010. But that was a great team, a great memory. It went undefeated, fourteen and zero, uh, and uh, you know we got a lot of a lot of good things to look back on that. But now we got this new team. Um, I'm excited about it. They, we got eighteen seniors. Um, they all play. Uh, you know, nobody really leads out of that bunch. That's probably the only thing I feel like we've missed this year. We don't have outstanding leadership, which you normally have with a good football team. But it seems like no, the seniors want to step on any, any anybody's toes or anything. So they're leading by group. So I got 18 seniors this year that have really uh, led by the by the overall package of what they bring to the table, and um, they've done a good job with that. And if they can get through one more game. It's going to be a memory of a lifetime for these young men. You know, a memory of a lifetime indeed. And, uh, you know, Coach, the big thing at the end of the day is uh, you got to go out there and play 48 more minutes of football to win a state championship. So, I mean, what, what is the biggest thing? How do you how do you stop their – how do you stop First, first Baptist's biggest player, Richie Millen, who, who is uh, basically their, 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 their star guy who, you know, who's been, you know, a leader for them for the last few years. How do you stop their number one guy, you know, given the fact that he's a Mr. Do-Everything for them at First Baptist? Well, you know, you're not going to totally shut him down. I'm going to tell you that. So what you do is try and contain him and, uh, you, know, you know, hell, I can't tell you what we're going to try and do. I, if I did that, Josh, I'd be giving out all the secrets or whatever. But, <laughs> no, we got, we got a good plan. Uh, you know, we played some, some good teams. CCC had a, uh, a good uh, running back and receivers and everything. So we've seen the competition. We've just got to – like I said, let's worry about what we do at Trinity Cabin. We do that and uh, scheme up and do the things we need to do. I, I, we got a chance. Like I told our kids yesterday, I said, it, it, I've been in, you know, four of these deals and um, won two, lost two. And I can tell you, you win it. You got, you cherish that for the, you have that for the rest of your life. You lose it. Nobody ever remembers who lost the game. That, and that's a shame because two of our best teams we've had at Trinity Catholic all state championship games to Pahokee. And it's a shame because, you know, you, you leave there with a runner up trophy and nobody talks about that. They talk about the great Pahokee team. So, you know, that's the deal that uh, we know we have to work with here at Trinity Catholic. We're used to do it. And I have, you know, memories and resources and stuff like that to, give these new young players a chance. They see it all the time here in our weight room and field house. There's pictures of state championship teams, trophies everywhere. Um, so hopefully they can see how important that is and use that to their advantage this coming Saturday. No, absolutely. Of course, the state championship game for Class 1S is this Saturday, 1 p.m. kickoff at Gene Cox Stadium in Tallahassee. It's going to be an atmosphere like no other. It's uh, two, two small programs, but two great small programs going at it for each other, like-minded programs, like similar size programs, and uh, it's going to be fun, Coach. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you Saturday out there in Tallahassee there in, uh, in, in the state championship game against First, uh, First Baptist out of Naples. Well, Josh, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for what you do for high school sports. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, with the way media and everything is and everybody's tightening their belts, um, you've stepped your game up and you've um, really made things um, kind of sporty for the high school guys. These kids don't – we don't see that in a lot of the newspapers anymore. We used to look forward to reading all that stuff, and now you got to go through it in different avenues. But you've done a fantastic job, and um, – 
proud to be on with you today and look forward to representing Ocala and Marion County this coming Saturday up in Tallahassee. Well, Coach, I appreciate it. We'll see you Saturday at the state championship game in Tallahassee. All right. Go Celtics. Appreciate it. That was Coach Head Coach John Brantley of the Trinity Catholic Celtics joining us here on 40HSFootball.com video. And we appreciate everybody joining us here. And we'll wrap this thing up. And uh, we'll see you more here on 40HSFootball.com with more coaches' interviews and other information from the state championships over the next two weeks. Again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.